Here's what Shang-Chi's post credit scenes mean for the MCU. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is here at last to bring martial arts mayhem, shirtless underground fighting rings, and a bold new hero to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And of course, it goes without saying that like all Marvel movies, Shang-Chi has post credit scenes, and they have some major implications for the MCU. We're gonna break down everything you need to know about these post credit scenes in just a moment. However, in order to do so, we obviously need to spoil what happens in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So if you haven't seen the film yet and you don't wanna be spoiled, make like Shang-Chi and Katie and find the nearest bus on out of here. All right, let's get into it, shall we? So the mid credit scene picks up immediately where the film leaves off. Shang-Chi and Katie followed Wong through the sling ring portal he created into the Sanctum Sanctorum. And they're analyzing the 10 rings to determine their origin, but they're coming up with nada. So to help aid their investigation, Wong has called in a pair of experts, a long haired Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner back in human form rather than as Professor Hulk with his arm in a sling. Appearing in hologram form like we see others do in Avengers Endgame, Carol explains that these aren't alien in origin, at least not any alien that she's encountered. Bruce mentions that they're not vibranium or anything found here on Earth, and Wong confirms that he can't find any mention of them in the books in Comertage either. More importantly, we learn that something inside the Ten Rings is functioning as a beacon and sending a signal off-world, and neither Bruce nor Carol know what it is or where it's going. Now, Bruce and Carol's physical appearances might raise a couple of questions about the timeline. Well, as Shang-Chi is walking to Katie's house, there are posters for a post-blip anxiety group and one for a dating app for people who got snapped, both of which indicate this is taking place in the wake of Avengers Endgame. Hair grows and Bruce probably realized it's not easy being green. Moving on, Wong tells Shang-Chi and Katie their lives are about to change and welcomes them to this weird world of superheroes before ultimately joining them to sing Hotel California at a karaoke parlor into the wee hours of the morning. So what does all of this mean? Well, it's significant for several reasons, because in the comics, the Ten Rings actually are alien in origin. They were artifacts from the McLuhans, an alien race of shape-changing space dragons. The Mandarin acquired the rings after discovering a crashed McLuhan starship in China's Valley of the Spirits, which had lain dormant for centuries. Murdering their rightful owner, the McLuhan explorer Axon Carr, the Mandarin took the rings for himself, and the rest was history. Although Carol mentions they're not alien in origin, that might just mean that she's never encountered the aliens in question. So maybe these rings do belong to the McLuhans, maybe they're sending them a signal or to another group of TBD aliens that might now have the Earth in their sights. However, given that Wen Wu spent centuries leading a murderous immortal existence while wearing the Ten Rings, I think they're actually connected to another upcoming MCU entry, the Eternals. In the Eternals trailer, we learn the Celestial sent the Eternals to Earth some 7,000 years ago. Given how old they are, it's reasonable to assume the Ten Rings could actually be a celestial artifact rather than McLuhan. And this could perhaps be a version of the cosmic beacon from the very first Eternals comics, which the Eternals used to communicate with those vengeful space gods, the Celestials. In the current Marvel Cinematic Universe, most of the Celestials are either dead or missing. The last known Celestial we saw was Ego the Living Planet, but he shuffled off this immortal coil in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. With the Eternals dealing with the emergence of a brand new Celestial, maybe whatever tech is inside the Ten Rings reactivated post-blip. So maybe when Shang-Chi used the Ten Rings in the way that he used them, they paged these space gods that their egg is about to hatch. In the comics, the Celestials returned to planet Earth several times for events known as hosts. They were tests given to their meaty little science experiments to determine whether or not they're worthy of preservation, or if they should be culled and turned into blood-filled smoothies instead. The emergence of a new Celestial seems like a perfect occasion for any of these other cosmic entities to come home to roost, and that would lend a far greater significance to these all-powerful artifacts which apparently had just been on Earth for centuries on end. But we'll find out more about the Celestials come November 5th when Eternals finally hits theaters, so fingers crossed that means more answers about Shang-Chi's many mysteries as well. The second scene is much more straightforward. After Xia Ling and Shang-Chi deal with the daddiest issue of them all, we see Xia Ling in her childhood room at the Ten Rings compound. Razor Fist arrives and tells her that everybody's waiting for her. Walking to the throne room that her father used to occupy, we see that Xia Ling is now in charge of the Ten Rings, and they have an updated color scheme to boot. But most importantly, there are no longer restrictions barring women from training in the unique brand of deadly martial arts and international terrorism at which the Ten Rings excels. Even more exciting though, we see text on screen announcing that the Ten Rings will return. The question though is exactly how, when, and where will they return? 
While a 10 rings Disney Plus series feels like an odd choice, I could see them popping up again in another show like Armor Wars or Ironheart, for example. Although the Mandarin in Iron Man 3 turned out to be fake, the 10 rings that Tony Stark encountered when he was building a suit of armor in a cave with a box of scraps was very real. Now with Tony Stark out of the picture, they might feel more comfortable taking Stark technology on their own and using it for their own fell purposes. And without Tony Stank, it's gonna be up to the heirs apparent James Rhodes and Riri Williams to save the day. Anyway, folks, there you have it. That is everything you need to know about Shang-Chi's post credit scenes and what they mean for the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We'll have even more theories, Easter egg breakdowns, and deep dives coming your way in the days ahead over on Nerdist.com. But for now, tell us, what did you think of Shang-Chi? Who do you think that beacon is contacting? And what does the future actually hold for the Ten Rings? What'd you tell him? I didn't tell him anything. Nothing. No. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.